In this unit, we've been reviewing the prerequisite skills you need to be successful in AP Calculus. Now let's review solving equations by factoring. I'm noticing that we have four terms here, so maybe grouping is in order. So let's factor out the GCF of the first two terms. That's going to be x squared. If I factor out x squared, that will leave behind x plus 5. When there is a negative in front, you should factor out a negative 1, and that will leave behind x plus 5. And all of this is equal to 0. Notice how we have a common factor of x plus 5 both times. That is the key to the grouping method, so luckily that is happening for us. Because x plus 5 itself is a common factor, we can factor out the x plus 5. If I put the x plus 5 out front, that's going to leave behind the x squared and the minus 1. So that's what goes inside the parentheses, x squared minus 1. Of course, x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares, so that part can be factored further. First we bring down the x plus 5, but then we factor this part as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now that we have factored completely, we can uh, go ahead and solve the equation using the zero product property. If we set each of these equal to zero, uh, from the first factor will give us x equals negative 5, and uh, the second factor will give us x equals negative 1, and the third factor will give us x equals positive 1. So these are the three solutions to problem A. Problem B. I'm noticing that all three of these terms are divisible by 4. So let's go ahead and get that done. Divide everything by 4. So that will give us x to the fourth power plus 9 is equal to 10x squared. Let's get 0 on one side and see what we have. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10x squared from both sides. Um, I'm looking at the degree of each term. This 10 squared belongs in the middle, so I'm sort of lining it up where it's going to go. So I have x to the fourth power minus 10x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. We will probably be able to factor this as a binomial times a binomial. So looking at the first term, x to the fourth power can only be factored as x squared times x squared. Now I'm going to jump over and look at the 9. That 9 is either going to be uh, 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. But I'm keeping my eye on the middle term of negative 10, and that makes me think that it's going to be 1 times 9. Now, uh, in order to make a negative 10, this is going to have to be negative, and this will have to be negative. That will give me a negative 1x squared uh, for the inner terms and it will give me a negative 9x squared for the outer terms, for a total of negative 10. Also, negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9, so that works out as well. Both of these factors can be factored further as the difference of two squares. So looking at the x squared uh, minus 1 part, that's going to factor as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Looking at the x squared minus 9 part, that's going to factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. So that's one way you could do it. Um, just as a side note, I could have done the zero product property immediately from here, which is what I would do if this wasn't the difference of two squares. What if this had been um, x squared minus 5 instead? Um, I could still set that equal to 0 and solve. Um, so I could have gone like this and done x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And then I would have added 1 to both sides, which would give me x squared equals 1. And then I would take the square root, and that would give me plus or minus 1. 
So it doesn't matter whether you uh, factor these further or if you go ahead and use your zero product property and uh, do your plus or minus square root. You're going to get the same answers. Anyway, back to what I was doing. So setting each of these equal to zero, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 1, positive 1, negative 3, and positive 3. So these are the four solutions to problem B. Well, look at this crazy thing. Uh, we got these factors everywhere. Uh, do not multiply this out, for goodness sake. There is an easier way. Notice that we have the same factor here and here. This makes me want to try substitution. So imagine that we uh, replace these factors with a single variable. So let's let u equal x to the third power minus 6. If we do that substitution, we get u squared plus 3u minus 10 is equal to 0. This looks like the type of thing we can solve, doesn't it? Let's factor this down and see what happens. So u squared will factor as u times u, 10. 10 is either going to factor as uh, 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. I'm looking at this 3, and I'm thinking 2 times 5. To get a positive 3, we're going to need a negative 2 and a positive 5. Also, negative 2 times 5 equals negative 10, so that checks out. Using the zero product property, I'm setting each of these equal to zero, we get uh, u is equal to 2, and u is equal to negative 5. But we are trying to solve for x, not u. So it is time to uh, get the x's back in, so let's reverse our substitution. Remember that u is really x to the third power minus 6. So um, this first little mini equation will become x to the third power minus 6 is equal to 2. And the second one will become x to the third power minus 6 is equal to negative 5. Now let's see if we can solve each of these. Adding 6 to both sides, we will get x to the third power is equal to 8. Uh, taking the cube root of both sides, maybe I'll go ahead and show it. Remember when it is an odd root that we're doing, we don't need plus or minus. So we just get x is equal to 2. How about the other one? Um, adding 6 to both sides. We're getting x to the third power is equal to 1. And again, taking the cube root of both sides, we end up with x is equal to 1. So these are the two solutions to problem C. For problem D, let's get everything on one side of the equation in descending exponential order. So in effect, I'm going to move this x to the third power over here, and I'm moving the 8x squared over there. Uh, of course, technically, I am subtracting x to the third power from both sides, and I am subtracting 8x squared from both sides. Okay, so... Um, if I put these in order, I'm going to end up with x to the fifth power minus x to the third power minus 8x squared plus 8 is equal to 0. And I'm once again thinking that grouping will probably work. Let's group the first two terms and the last two terms and factor out the GCF of each. The GCF of the first pair is x to the third power. If I bring that out in the front, I will have uh, x squared minus 1 inside the parentheses. Now here I see there is a common factor of 8, um, but because the leading coefficient of this pair is negative 1, 
I must think of it as negative 8. So I'm going to factor out a negative 8. Be careful about the way that will change the sign here. So I will end up with x squared minus 1. And uh, again, notice that we have the same factor twice, x squared minus 1 here and here. That really has to happen for the grouping method to work, so we appreciate the coincidence. Now, we're going to take this common factor of x minus 1 and pull it out in the front. We're going to factor it out. Okay, that's a little ugly, so it's kind of bothering me. OCD, y'all. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so if I take this x squared minus 1 and put it out in the front, that is going to leave behind the x to the third power and the minus 8. So that's what goes inside of the parentheses. So I have x to the third power minus 8, and all of that is equal to 0. Okay, each of these can be factored further, but rather than do that, I think this time I'm going to go straight to my zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. So I have uh, x squared minus one equals zero, and I have x to the third power minus eight is equal to zero. Adding one to both sides, we get, we get x squared is equal to one, Adding 8 to both sides, we have x cubed is equal to 8. Uh, then taking the square root of both sides uh, for the first one and taking the cube root of both sides for the second one. All right, one of these requires a plus or minus, and one of them doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you take the square root of both sides, um, that's an even root. You need a plus or minus on your solution. So here I will have x is equal to plus or minus 1. Um, but here there's no plus or minus, so I just get x is equal to 2. The cube root of 8 is 2. So we have three solutions. 1, negative 1, and positive 2. These are the three solutions for um, problem D. In set two, problem A, we have the problem sort of divided up into two parts. So we've got this first part here and another part here. In each part, we see common factors. I see x plus twos in each part, and I see x plus sixes in each part. So let's take out these common factors. So we're going to factor out the x plus 2 and the x plus 3. But how many? Look at each of the x plus 2s. Um, for, from the first part of the equation, we see two of them. All right, it's x plus 2 to the second power. In the second part, there's only one. When you factor out the GCF, you always take out the smaller amount. So x plus 2 to the first power, that's coming out in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up with an x plus 2 way out in the front because of this. Now let's look at the x plus 6s. Guess how many x plus 6s I'm going to take out. Hopefully you said 3 because um, in the first part there's 3, in the second part there's 4. So you take out the smaller amount, so I am going to factor out x plus 6 to the third power. Okay, now, uh, I think I will use square brackets instead of parentheses, because we're going to have some parentheses inside of parentheses for a while. When you factor something out, you wind up subtracting from the exponents. So this is like um, x plus 2 to the first power. So when I uh, factor out an x plus 2, I'm really, I'm really dividing by x plus 2 to the first power. And the way you divide is by subtracting that exponent. So um, I'm going to end up subtracting 1 from this little power here. 
And that's why on the inside, I'm going to have x plus 2 uh, to the first power, which is just x plus 2. Um, when I get to the uh, second part, this x plus 2 is going to be completely gone because, uh, you know, I subtracted it all the way. Or 1 minus 1 is the 0 power. Now, what about the x plus 6? So remember, I took out three of those. So when I divide by x plus 6 to the third power, I'm going to end up subtracting that exponent. So I'm subtracting 3 from each of these powers. So of course, this x plus 6 is completely gone because it's the third power, and that's I took out all three. So I put nothing here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my plus sign, which is this plus sign right there. Um, now, if I subtract three of these, that's going to leave x plus 6 to the 1 power, which is simply x plus 6. So the beauty of this is that um, each of these are now only to the 1 power, which means that uh, the parentheses are no longer even really needed. So this is really just an x plus 2. Don't really need the parentheses anymore. Let me just rewrite that. And this one over here is uh, just an x plus 6. Don't really need the parentheses anymore. That's why on the next step, I'm going to have uh, x plus 2 times x plus 6 to the third power. But then in here, x plus x, that's 2x. And uh, 2 plus 6 is 8. So I have 2x plus 8. So this is nicely factored. It, it, um, it's really factored enough for me to solve the equation. I could take out a 2, which is another GCF inside of this set, but I have an equation. I'm shooting for, um, I'm just trying to find x, so I can leave it like this. Let's go ahead and do our zero product property. So um, setting this factor equal to zero, I'm going to get, um, maybe I'll, I'll just go ahead and show it. So I'm going to set x plus 2 equal to zero. I'm setting x plus 6 equal to zero. Um, I know it's to the third power, but um, the only way that x plus 6 to the third power is going to equal 0 is if this inner part, x plus 6, is equal to 0. And I have 2x plus 8 is equal to 0. So this first little equation, of course, will give me x equals negative 2. The second equation will give me x equals negative 6. And let's just do this in our heads. If we subtract 8, so, and divide by 2. So we have negative 8 divided by 2, so that's going to be negative 4. So these are the three solutions to problem A. Let's try to solve problem B in the same way. Notice that we have uh, 2x minus 3s in the first part of the equation, and we have some more 2x minus 3s in the second part of the equation. So let's go ahead and factor out some 2x minus 3s. How many will we factor out? The lesser amount. So we're going to take out uh, 2x minus 3 to the third power. Now let's turn our attention to the x squared minus 9 factors. So we have x squared minus 9s here, and we have x squared minus 9s here. So how many will I take out? Only one, because uh, in the second part, we just have x squared minus 9 to the 1 power, if you will. So if we take out the lesser amount, we will have x squared minus 9 out in the front. So again, I will temporarily put these square brackets instead of parentheses. So remember, when I factor out um, my 2x minus 3 to the third power, I'm going to end up subtracting 3 from these exponents. So I'm subtracting 3 right here, and I'm going to end up subtracting 3 right here. Uh, I'm really dividing by 2x minus 3 to the third power, and when you divide, you subtract the powers. Uh, 
as I factor out x squared minus 9, this is to the 1 power in a way. So that's why I will be subtracting 1 from each of these exponents. So what will that leave on the inside? From the first part, uh, this 2x minus 3 part is gone because I subtracted all of them, right? 3 minus 3 is 0. So I will only have the x squared minus 9 part. Um, notice that it is going to be to the 1 power. So I don't really need parentheses. So I'm just going to go ahead and put x squared minus 9. For the second part of this, um, looking at the 2x minus 3 to the 5th power, I'm subtracting 3. Uh, so that's going to leave an exponent of 2. So I'm going to have plus 2x minus 3 to the second power. For the x squared minus 9 part, this is completely gone. I subtracted all there was. 1 minus 1 is 0, however you want to look at it. So we have this. I think we will need to factor this part out. Uh, multiply this out and get rid of the exponent so we can combine like terms and things in here. So that's what I'm going to do now. So uh, for now, let's just leave this alone. So we have 2x minus 3 to the third power, x squared minus 9. Uh, okay, I think I'll just go ahead and start using parentheses now. So um, I'm going to just bring down my x squared minus 9. But for this part, Maybe I'll do a little something off to the side. If I have uh, 2x minus 3 squared, that's 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. And if you multiply this out, you're going to get 4x squared. Look, inner, I have negative 6x. Outer, I have another negative 6x. So that's negative 12x. And then plus 9. So that's what you get from 2x minus 3 squared. So I'm just going to fill that in. So plus 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And all of that is equal to 0. So let's combine some like terms and stuff. So I see we have um, x squared and 4x squared. So I'm going to have 5x squared. From that, maybe I'll just color code this a little bit little bit so I'm putting these together um, what else do we have there's no like term for the uh, negative 12x so I'm just going to bring that down uh, I'm noticing that we have negative 9 and positive 9 so they just cancel each other out so I am left with this so so far we have uh, 2x minus 3 to the third power times x squared minus 9 times 5x squared minus 12x. We do need to go ahead and uh, factor this part. So I'm seeing that we have a common factor of x. So I think I don't feel like rewriting the entire problem just to bring this x out. Well, I'll do it off camera. So I took out that common factor of x and I put it in the very front and here's what we had left. So I think we can go ahead and say the final answer here. We can do the rest of this in our head. Um, if we set each of these factors equal to zero, um, for starters, we're going to have x equals zero from that first factor. If I set uh, 2x minus 3 equal to 0, I'm going to add 3, divide by 2. So that's going to give me uh, 3 over 2. Okay, um, if I set this equal to 0, I'm going to get x squared equals 9. I take the square root of both sides. That's going to be plus or minus 3. So I think I'm going to go ahead and write 3 and negative 3. And if I set this equal to 0, adding 12, to both sides and dividing by 5 will give me 12 fifths. So these are the five solutions to problem B.